Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. And here we go. Welcome into Culture Keys today. The studio is alive. I sense the presence of the Lord. I believe God has divine purpose for our time together today. And I just want to encourage you, no matter how this finds you, good days, bad days, ups and downs, know that God is in control. And I believe God is instructing us, leading us, directing us, infusing us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of how to walk life out in the kingdom so that we can lead strongly in the culture around us. And God knows it is high time uh, that God anoint, call, and favor uh, leadership that can lead in the culture. And we've been talking a lot about life in the kingdom. I hope this isn't uh, bored you. I, I pray that you sense and feel and understand the, the, the importance of these kingdom concepts and how they play out in our everyday life and encourage our faith and our declaration before the Lord. But there's a couple of things that I want to add over the next few weeks as uh, we kind of come to the end of this line of thinking. But the kingdom is to be chased and pursued. It's important for us to to uh, chase after, to pursue the principles in life in the kingdom. It's to be known and understood. Oh, we, we've got to pursue knowledge and wisdom and direction of the Holy Spirit concerning life in the kingdom. And lastly, it has to be accessed and utilized. The kingdom must be chased and pursued, known and understood, access and utilized. It can't just be something out there. We've got to learn life in the kingdom. And life in the kingdom is about returning to God's original purpose for man, which is revealed in his creation of a garden and in his deliverance of the people of Israel from Egyptian bondage. And we've talked about these principles. In the kingdom, the king's voice is heard. And in the kingdom, the king's words are obeyed. In the kingdom... The king's purpose is revealed. And I believe God is a God of process. And it's not my favorite thing about God. But nevertheless, I believe it to be true. He is a God of process. And there is a process to the activation of the kingdom in our lives. And so if you have a Bible, I want you to turn to Matthew's gospel, chapter number 16, where God is having, Jesus is having a very important discussion with his disciples that is initiated by a question. Incredibly important discussion, incredible depth of revelation in this discussion, and this discussion is initiated by a question. And I believe that as we dig into this and into these scriptures, that you're going to find that God's revealing, once again, the kingdom mandate. I, I believe that far too often we settle for a church life when a kingdom life has been made available. But we've got to understand the process for activating that kingdom in our life. And you know this conversation. Jesus asks his disciples, who do men say that I am? So, Let's look at this process of activation. If you have a pen, write this, these words down. So life in the kingdom must begin with a revelation. Life in the kingdom must begin with a revelation. Jesus asks his disciples, who do men say that I am? And then you know he ratcheted it down. He made it personal. And he said, who do you? say that I am. So the process of activating the kingdom within us begins with something revealed. We have to see something we have never seen before. Now, revelation means a surprising and previously unknown fact, especially one that is made known in a dramatic way. Listen, if we're going to operate in the kingdom, we got to get to know the king. 
Let me say that again. If we're going to operate in the kingdom, and if we're going to lead in the culture, we have to learn to operate in the kingdom. If we're going to operate in the kingdom, then we must get to know the king. Who do you say that I am? Now, the kingdom is revealed because it is sought for. Matthew 6, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and all of his righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. He doesn't just ask us to seek for it. He asks us to seek for it first. We're not going to see until we look, and we will not find until we search. Who do men say that I am? Are you looking into that? <laughs> and how often do we continue to look into that? And the kingdom is revealed by the Spirit, not by human reasoning. We don't ex God certainly uses our, our minds and He uses our wills and our emotions and He uses these things. But you're not going to get to know God without the aid of the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of truth that leads us into and reveals truth. And boy, the truth has the strength to make us free. Listen to the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. He said, I, <coughs> eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of a man those things which God has prepared for them that love him. So first of all, we have, we have this mystery that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, that has not entered into our imagination, but God has prepared for us. The second stanza says, but God has revealed them to us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. So we have these two phrases, God has prepared, God has revealed. And the first one ought to, mind yet ought to send joy all through your heart, that God has things prepared for you that you don't have any idea about and that you can't discern in your current situation. In fact, as your current situation is preaching and declaring to you that you're not going to make it, you're going to be defeated, you're never going to succeed. I want to declare to you today, God has prepared some things you don't know about and God will reveal those things by His Spirit. And what God has prepared is his will. Oh, hallelujah. God has blessings prepared for you that are a part of his will. And his will is the kingdom. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And when his kingdom comes, his will is done. And when his will is done, it is an indication that the kingdom has come. His will, what we couldn't see, what we couldn't hear, what we couldn't know, it has to be revealed to us by the Spirit. Revelation is the first part of the process. Secondly is confession. Hear what Peter said. Jesus asked him, who, who do you say that I am? And Peter declares, you are the Christ. This was his confession. You can't own it till you say it. Confession is, it's an activating step. Confession activates salvation. It activates deliverance. It activates revelation. And you and I cannot be afraid to say what we've seen and what we believe. Man, our, our silence speaks volumes. The earth is literally waiting for our confession. That's why God wants to show himself to each of us. Not so we'll have chill bumps or know more than the next guy, but so we can have a confession like Peter's, you are the anointed one and his anointing. You see, faith births words. Mm. And then words birth more faith. We speak literally because we believe. And we believe because it has been revealed to us by the Spirit of God. 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul wrote, writes, We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Because we believe, we speak. Let's work on that just a moment. Because we believe, we speak. But what do we believe that we're not speaking? We know words are powerful. We know they contain life and death. 
because we believe we speak. We've got to be speakers of the truth, the love, the power, the grace of Jesus Christ. Because we believe we speak. Now, because we believe when we speak, our words become a harvest. They become what we've sent them and declared them to be. My question for you today is, what are you believing? What are you speaking? What are you confessing? Because you will live the sum total of the words you declare. So often we're reporters of what we're feeling and experiencing and seeing. You know, we're, we're, all we're doing is what we're speaking is reporting our condition. And what we do when we do that is we support it and we reproduce it. You know, you can say you want out of it, but what are you talking about? Because you talked yourself into where you are, you will have to talk yourself out. Stop being a reporter of the current conditions. Because as you report on the current conditions, your words are reproducing the current conditions. You're like a hamster on a wheel. Not going anywhere, not moving. Just reproducing the fear and the doubt, the discouragement, the depression... We're reinforcing what we say we want deliverance from. What are the words you're declaring? Revelation, seeing him, must turn into confession, declaring him so that he can be all the things we declare him to be. I speak strength to your confession, and I believe that God is going to reveal himself to you in ways you never dreamed possible. I sure do love you. Can't wait to see you right back here next time on Culture Keys.